Welcome to Worship with Westminster Presbyterian Lincoln, Nebraska. We're glad that you're with us in worship today. I do want to let you know that today not only is the first Sunday of the calendar year 2021, all right, we made it, uh, but it's also Epiphany Sunday, which is the Sunday where we hear the story of the three wise men or the magi, depending on what term you like to use. Those who came and visited Jesus after following a star and will be encouraged by their sense of overwhelming joy. And at the conclusion of the sermon, you'll be shared a gift of sorts that can help you as you have, seek to have joy in the beginning of this new year, 2021. You'll hear all about it in the sermon. There is also a link in this past week's Evine, our weekly newsletter. So if you get that, you can also find the link there. I also want to let you know that this coming week I will be taking a few days off for some vacation and rest after the uh, busy and exciting and wonderful Christmas season. We had wonderful services. I was so excited at the turnout that we had on Christmas Eve in our parking lot worship services, and I'm so thankful for all the kind words that we've had about the service uh, for Christmas Eve and the amazing a silent night that you all participated in in our church family and I want to thank John and Laura Ross uh, in particular for their great work in pulling all that together and helping us think about what that looked like. This Sunday is Epiphany Sunday and I hope that you will be encouraged to live with joy as we engage the story of the wise men. And now let us begin to worship God with gladness in our call to worship. The Magi had a dream. They dreamed of a Messiah. They dreamed of just rulers. They dreamed of a new day for all people. The Magi had a dream, and this dream led them to action. They journeyed to unknown places. They followed a star. They walked for days to get to Jesus. So let us be like the Magi. May our dreams inspire action. May we worship the one true God. Amen.
Isaiah proclaimed that God's glory would enter into the world, bringing a time of rejoicing after a time of confusion and sin. Recognizing God's glory and our own confusion and sin, let us confess our sins, first silently and then as God's people together. Merciful God, light of the world, we confess that we have not resisted the darkness of sin. You deliver the poor and the helpless, but we have ignored their cry. You take pity on the weak and the destitute, but our hearts are hard in the face of their need. You heal the wounded and save the oppressed, but we have placed our trust in the callous of violence of war. Forgive us, we pray, awakening in sincere repentance, that we may shine with the light of your saving grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, thrill and rejoice in God's goodness. Believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. few weeks in our children's chat, we've been talking about things that were different in the sanctuary, first in the season of Advent that leads up to Christmas, but also on Christmas. And we talked about the characters in the Christmas story. Well, today we're going to talk about three last characters, the wise men. And we think maybe there was three because they brought three gifts to the newborn Jesus. We'll talk more about that in a second. Now, on Christmas, you might have had some Christmas trees like we have here in the sanctuary, and you might have had one in your house, and it had gifts underneath it, perhaps. And maybe if you opened one of those gifts, you got something you were really excited about that brought you joy and happiness. That doesn't mean we just find happiness in things, because when the wise men brought gifts to Jesus, they were overjoyed to meet Jesus. They were overjoyed at the birth of Jesus, because of the good that it meant for the world. They were excited about this newborn Jesus who would go on as we know and trust to be our savior who loves us. So the greatest gift, more than the toboggan or the hat that I got to keep my head warm, more than the PlayStation controller from my father-in-law that I got to play games with Lauren, more than any of those gifts, the most important gift that I receive at Christmas and that we all receive, is the gift of the reminder of where Jesus comes from. Jesus as a baby, who is the reminder that God comes into the world and loves us at Christmas. And that is a great gift. So now let us close our eyes and bow our heads as we pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for your love. Love that meets us in Jesus. Help us to find joy in Christ this year. Amen.
we can serve them down the side. Friends, as we prepare to hear the word read and proclaimed, let us pray. Holy God, in this season where we've thought about how to be dreamers, we are inspired by the dream that the Magi had. The dream to follow you by a star and a dream to continue on their own way. We are inspired by their joy and we are inspired by their hope. So inspire us by your spirit today at the hearing of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable, pleasing, and even joyful in your sight. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, and the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. And those of Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, and they were asking, Where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. And when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. The scribes told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them, when the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star that had stopped, They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid homage to him. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of the wise men or the magi is a favorite scene in the birth stories of Jesus for many Christians. You know, I have always been kind of mesmerized by the story and by the wise men themselves. I don't know about you. And maybe that was because the Magi always had more ornate costumes than the shepherds in the nativity scenes of my childhood. Maybe it's because the big kids were the ones who got to wear the spray-painted Burger King crowns and hold the perfume bottles and the bedazzled boxes that we Christians in the U.S. tend to identify with these travelers. Now, when we hear about the Magi or the wise men, our curiosities are piqued. When we read Matthew 2, we wonder, who are these people willing to follow a star at its rising to find an infant? Why were they overwhelmed with joy when they stopped in Bethlehem? When we sing hymns such as We Three Kings, we are drawn into the story. I love this hymn. Ruby Theory Kings is a rhythmic, tromping hymn in 6 8 time, and I know we all love that part to sing the buildup of oh, 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 and then the refrain hits. We'll sing that after the sermon. But today in the sermon, we'll dig a little deeper into these characters as we finish our Advent and Christmas series, Those Who Dream. And thinking about the Magi, New Testament scholar Rabin Brown reminds us that the Magi were Gentiles. They were not a Jewish sect or Jewish people looking for their own Messiah. They were Gentiles. Furthermore, the Greek word interpreted as wise men in our version, the NRSV, is magoi, which points us to the identity of these wise men as astrologers or people who looked for signs in the stars. And this is where we get the more direct term that we also have said today, magi, which gives us more detail on who they were than the term wise men. And it points to a sense of magic or mystery in that seeking out answers in the stars. Either way, Matthew wants us to know that these people who follow a star to see Jesus are not Jewish They're not people who are looking for the king of the Jews for their own salvation. They recognized, however, that a unique and an important child had been born, and they wanted to carry this news to King Herod. Now, often the best stories that we love in life have a plot twist, whether it's a great book or a movie. That moment where the reader has to pause for a second and take in the story. Maybe our jaws drop just a little bit and we're surprised at what's happened as we enter the emotion of the story. Now here, the plot twist is that Herod and all the capital city of Judea are terrified at the news that the Magi bring. But why are they bothered? Shouldn't the news of the Messiah be good news for these folks? Shouldn't Herod and the people be dancing in the streets? Well, in an ideal world, yeah, they should be. But in a world marked by sin and human selfishness, Herod fears for who this child would grow up to be, that this child would grow up to be a threat. 
So Herod seeks his own status and power and lineage and rule and reign to continue and to end this threat of the child. Herod fears this child who has been named the king of the Jews because of the potential for a Messiah to bring him down from his own seat of power and privilege. Professor Michael Joseph Brown of Candler School of Theology adds another layer to these characters in writing this as he points us toward Jesus. Contrary to the expectations of the Magi, the king who is to rule Israel is not to be born in Jerusalem. Remember, the Magi go to Jerusalem first and then have to learn from the scribes that he will be born in Bethlehem. So he's not born in Jerusalem, but like his ancestor David, Brown writes, in Bethlehem, among the insignificant clans of Judah. The least of these, a little child, is now among the prominent. Matthew informs readers that those we consider to be insignificant or unworthy of our serious consideration can turn out to be the very agents God chooses to lead us. When we read further in Matthew, we learn that Jesus, as he grew, was not a Messiah who toppled the force of the empire with his own force in return. Rather, a Savior who led the people to resist violence with a way of peace and love, a way of community that was bonded together, even when times were tough. And I think there's a challenge or a so what for us in the story at this point. As we live in a nation that clearly has great power on the world stage, a nation that is characterized by great disparities between people and power when people without, people with riches and people without. We Christians are called to serve with a sense of peace called to serve and live in an ethic of love that we've been talking about over the last few weeks. Such an approach to life makes change in the world, and sometimes it even makes waves. But ultimately, we look to the later teachings and example of this infant that the Magi sought out to guide our own lives today. In our faith, people with power and privilege are called called to view those who are hurting and on the margins as valued by God and created in the image of God, valued as neighbor as we seek to love our neighbor. So as the Magi set out at Herod's direction, they were led foremost by the star in their own sense of wonder to Bethlehem, the same wonder that had led them to Jerusalem. So they arrive in Bethlehem where the child had been born. In stark contrast to the emotions of Herod in Jerusalem and the elite and powerful, the Magi arrive in Bethlehem and are overwhelmed with joy when the star stops. The Magi, who were seen as outsiders themselves, find joy in this child that is now facing the threat of Herod's wrath. See, the Magi were outsiders to the faith, as we said, that proclaimed this particular Messiah— Outsiders, too, to the region by arriving from the east, likely from Persia. But here, in this place of Bethlehem, they find joy that reflects our own joy in being met by Christ, our own joy at at knowing Christ. And from that place of joy, the Magi respond by giving gifts that they had brought for the child. And here the Magi respond out of that sense of joy in stark contrast to Herod's response of fear. And here's another so what or lesson we can take today. Do we respond to Jesus with fear like Herod or will we respond to Jesus with joy like the Magi? When we respond to Christ out of fear, our faith takes the shape of fear and we perpetuate judgment And we perpetuate anger into the world. We become fearful. But when we respond to Jesus with joy, we can't help but respond by sharing gifts of value from our own lives with others. 
You know, we all have gifts of great worth, whether it's the gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, valuable gifts monetarily like the Magi, or it's the gift of an artistic talent sharing music or drawing, or the gift of sharing our lived experience through our stories and the times that we have lived through in the body of Christ. Ultimately, whatever gifts we bring, sharing gifts helps us to be dreamers for God today in the world. And those gifts help our faith. They even help our church persevere. Today, we are thinking about how those who dream persevere. And when we respond to Christ with joy rather than fear, there is no question that we are able to persevere. Christ's church then makes a true difference in our neighborhoods. So when our West fa- Westminster family responds to Christ with joy rather than fear, I believe we can become a community of joy, a community that lives out Christ's love in the neighborhoods around us and shares with our neighbors whether they have power or not. We become a community that will make a true difference in Near South and Country Club and Antelope Park and Irvingdale and beyond. At the start of this new year, I know we have a lot of hopes about the future of our church family. I know we have concerns because of the reality of COVID-19. I know there's unease, but I also know there is excitement. So along with our hopes, I want to challenge us to seek joy in Christ at the beginning of the year so that it will send us on a trajectory of joy for the rest of the year. Because, friends, joy will lead us into the place we are called. Joy will inspire us to share gifts as we seek to care for others. And joy will no doubt give us the unity to live in faith and to persevere as God's dreamers. So to help us foster a sense of joy at the start of the new year, I'm going to conclude our sermon by sharing a gift with you. I mentioned it in the welcome this morning. Now, this gift is small, it's a little abstract, but I think it has the ability to help us navigate the new year, to help us deepen our faith, and to help us respond in this new year with a sense of joy like the Magi. Your gift today is a star word. Now, I don't want you to get confused because that sounds a lot like Star Wars, and I'm sure some of you got Baby Yoda gifts and things like that this Christmas. This is different. This is a star, W-O-R-D, word. So I want us to think about a gift from Westminster being a word for you, not necessarily God's word, though they are faithful words. This idea of star words reflects the guidance that the Magi sought in the stars as they sought to find Jesus. And it's an idea that can help reflect and inspire our faith in the world. The link to star words is available in two places. The first was in the Evine this past week. The second is the standard link on our website. And if you go to westminsterlincoln.org, go to the worship tab and follow the link at the bottom, For PDF downloads, you'll find a document called Star Wars. And if you're saying, that's a lot to go through, think about the Magi. They followed a star for 40, 50, 60 miles to find Jesus. You can follow two or three links. But on that Star Wars sheet, words sheet, there are 31 words. And I want you to take that sheet, find your personal word, and to do that, you locate the day of your birthday. And now you can receive that word as your gift. Now, my birthday is January 5th, so happy birthday to me soon. But the word by the number five on the Star Word sheet is the word compassion. So my word to start 2021 is compassion. Number five, compassion. That's my word. So now you might be wondering, we've sat through all this instruction. What am I supposed to do with this word? So I'm going to give you three ways or things you can do. First, you might pray to God for help in living out that word in the year to come. So I might pray to be more compassionate as we start the new year. And I might be looking for ways to be more compassionate in the world around me. 
You might also make a word association bubble with your word in the middle and then a bunch of arms poking out of it to show you what things you associate with that word. So what do I associate with compassion and what does that mean for me and how can I share that? Lastly, you might look up your word or a synonym, if it's not exact, but a synonym in a Bible concordance or online to see how many times and where your word shows up in Scripture. You know, there are a number of ways you can probably come up with some other great ones to engage and live out this gift of a star word at the beginning of 2021. So I hope you'll embrace this activity, you'll go find your Star Word, and you'll engage it seriously as a gift. A gift that I hope you will receive with joy, with the hope of having joy, like the Magi. Now let us close our sermon this week with a prayer. God of our dreams, inspire us as we receive your word as scripture We receive your word as message, but also as we receive a single word as a gift. Let our star words be words that encourage us to live as your people and to dream of a better world for us, but also for our neighbors. In the name of Christ, we pray and we pray with joy as we move into this new year. Amen.
friends, as we are invited to be welcomed by Christ with joy, as we are invited to encounter God entering the human experience in Jesus with joy and with hope, we are also invited to Christ's table with joy and hope. So friends, on this day, will we be inspired in this meal for the life of faith, for the sharing of our gifts, and to truly live in joy in the weeks to come. For Christ has done much for us, and Christ loves us. Friends, this table is not a Presbyterian table, nor is it Westminster's table, but it is Christ's table. And you are welcome to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper today. Now let us pray. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God, it is truly our right to give our thanks and praise this day as we celebrate this meal. We remember that you were with us in creation, creating the world and the cosmos and humankind for a unique relationship. We remember that you did not forsake humankind, even though we erred in sin and sought our own way. You pursued us with love and with hope. You pursued us with compassion. And so, God, in the fullness of time, after having sent prophets and kings, you sent a true Messiah, Jesus Christ, who ate with those who were on the outside, who cared for those who were marginalized, who sought to seek who sought to live and share in joy and in love. So God, as we have come to know Christ Jesus, who lived and died and was resurrected, giving hope and defeating death, so we come to this table with joy. So we come to this table with hope for your promises, hope for the dreams that you have set forth in our lives. So God, meet us at this place. Meet us in this meal. Meet us with your grace. And we pray all this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night of his arrest, our Savior sat at table with his disciples. And the Apostle Paul writes that he took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now you are invited to partake of the bread of Christ. Friends, in the same way, after the supper, Christ took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, Do so in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Thanks be to God. And now you are invited to participate in Christ's cup in your home. And let us pray. God, as you have met us with grace at this table and grace in the life of Christ, so we ask that you will give us life in this new year. We ask that your spirit will meet us, encourage us, and inspire us to be people who live in joy and who serve in hope and who work for peace. All in the name of Christ. Amen. Lord, we reach out to you for guidance. Please show us which way to turn. Calm our anxious thoughts. Come speak into our mind. Strengthen us as we falter and feel weary. 
May we feel strength rising up within our heart, bring clarity into our vision and dreams. We trust that you are with us no matter where we go or what we decide to do. You journey with us always. With a sense of joy and with a sense of sharing our gifts, now our service begins out in the world, in our homes, wherever we go and wherever God calls us. So this week, I hope that you will find your star word if you haven't already and pray about it. When you locate that word in our PDF, I hope that you will find ways to celebrate that word with a sense of joy rooted in the gift of grace in Jesus Christ. So this week, as we seek to serve the Lord, may the grace, mercy, and peace of God go with you, lived out in Jesus Christ, and inspired within our hearts and minds by the Holy Spirit, today and every day. Amen.